Welcome to Captain Tales. Number 54, and this is going to be a collection of Russian and Tartar poetry. And poetry is not my favorite art form by any means. I actually took me about 25 years to even respect it. And at one point, I, uh, I love all creativity, but it took me a while to get poetry. And I love songs and everything like that. But one time I saw this like 95-year-old poet perform in a church. And I redefined everything I thought capable of poetry, and it gave me an entirely new respect for it. And so today I found a collection, or over the past months, I found a collection of a few different poems. I'm not going to read them all here. Some are from a Russian book, and some are from a Siege of Peking book. I'm going to read those ones first, and then I'm going to sparingly read some of the Russians, although I'll post them all so you can check it out, and I'll try to put the links below if I can still find them. But they have a lot of interesting insight in poetry because you combine a lot of stuff and you tell a lot of stories in a minimal amount of words and you kind of allude at different um, interesting things in poetry, which is kind of nice. It's very, it's like a symbolic form of, of writing and it, uh, it works on several different interesting levels that I find cool. And these are some old ones that tell a lot about that particular time period where we're trying to figure out more about. So this is one of the books, and the appendix has a few poems, and then the other book, I'll put the link below. But enjoy these. Take a look at what you think. I'll, I'll describe some of them. I won't read all of them again, but I'm going to start here. So we're going to say, the three poems which follow are in themselves full of interest. Translated by the author and now published for the first time in this country, they throw much light on Chinese Tartarian life. One expressing conjugal tenderness, another showing that China has her heroines, and a third proving that the Chinese are not devoid of chivalrous sentiment. People capable of this strain of feeling are not beyond the pale of our sympathy. Of the three prose documents, it is enough to say that they are cited in the text as of great value. So here we go. Let's take a look at these first three from this book, and then we'll go into some random Russian ones that I think hold an interesting key to history and other aspects of reality. So this one's called Su Wu to His Wife. On setting out on his embassy to the court of the Grand Khan of Tartary in 100 BC. So keep that in mind too. Grand Khan of Tartary, 100 BC. So the emperor, empire was established full blown at that point. You don't know how long it's been going. Here we go. Twin trees whose bows together twine. Two birds that guard one nest. We'll soon be far asunder torn as sunrise from the west. Hearts knit in childhood's innocence. Long bound in Hyman's ties, one goes to distant battlefields, one sits at home and sighs. Like carrier bird, though seas divide, I'll seek my lonely mate. But if afar I find a grave, you'll mourn my hapless fate. To us the future's all unknown, in memory seek relief. Come touch the chords you know so well, and let them soothe our grief. And the little uh, asterisk says, On arriving, he was thrown into prison, lowered into a well and treated with great indignity. We are not told that his life was threatened, yet his master made war on the Khan to rescue or avenge him. The Khan in great alarm released him and came to terms. With such precedence in their history, how could the Dowinger and her clique be so blind as to follow the example of the Grand Khan? <laughs> Uh, that's the writing from the uh, Jesuits for you. All right, here we go. The next second one said Mulan, a Chinese Joan of Arc. A little different from the Disney movie, probably, but who knows? There's probably secrets in there. A Chinese ballad of the Liang Dynasty, 502 to 556 A.D. An officer being disabled, his daughter puts on his armor and so disguised leads his troops to the conflict. The original is anonymous and of uncertain date. I wonder if this is where the Joan of Arc story comes from, where the Deborah Sampson story comes from in the Revolution times. Uh, who knows, but they always recycle. So this one says, Say, maiden at your spinning wheel, we, why heave that deep-drawn sigh? Is it fear, perchance, or love you feel? Pray tell, oh, tell me why. Nor fear nor love has moved my soul, away such idle thought. A warrior's glory is the goal by my ambition sought. My father's cherished life to save, my country to redeem. The dangers of the field I'll brave, I am not what I seem. No son has he his troop to lead, no brother dear have I. So I must mount my father's steed into the battle high. At dawn of day she quits her door, at evening rests her head, where loud the mountain torrents roar and mail-clad soldiers tread. The northern plains are gained at last, the mountains sink from view, the sun shines cold in the wintry blast, it pierces through and through. 
A thousand foes around her fall, and red blood stains the ground, but Mulan, who survives it all, returns with glory crowned. Before the throne they bend the knee in the palace of Chang'an, full many a knight of high degree, but the bravest is Mulan. Nay, prince, she cries, my duty's done, no guerdon I desire, but let me to my home be gone, to cheer my aged sire. She nears the door of her father's home, a chief with trumpets blare, but when she doffs her waving plume, she stands a maiden fair. <sighs> Very interesting, and I'm sure there's a lot of more stories on her, but nice little poem. And this last one of this section is called The Midnight Offering, a tale of the Tartar Wars related to a Manchu of the Imperial Clan. On the last night of the year, the emperor offers a sacrifice in one of his family temples on the east of the canal, not far from the British legation, and it is generally believed that this sacrifice is offered in whole or in part to the manes of a Chinese general, who nearly three centuries ago opposed the advance of the Tartars. So this one says, You ask me to tell why, in yonder halls, the lord of the rivers and hills, there at midnight low on the pavement falls, and an annual rite fulfills. T'was after the rise of our Manchu clan, when our sires were roaming the plains. This rite was ordained for a worthy man, whose honor unfading remains. One morning our founder, the brave Tai Tzu, was beat in a terrible fight. His arrows were spent, his spear broken too, and safety lay only in flight. The cloud of pursuers waxed thin and few, as through the thick jungle he sped. One warrior at last left alone to pursue, and fleeter the fugitive fled. All way worn and weary, but not in despair, he sought in the jungle to hide, only hoping at best for a wild beast's lair, when a vine-covered cavern he spied. My lady, he cried to an aged crone, whom at the cave's entrance he found, pray let me repose in your fortress of stone, and spread me a mat on the ground. Refreshment and shelter I will not withhold, you've nothing to fear, said the dame, for I have a son who's a soldier bold, in his need I should wish him the same. Just then the pursuer burst into the cave, the flash of his falchion was seen, but thoughtful the life of her stranger to save, the matron quick rushed in between. Spare the life of my guest, and touch not a hair, I received him for your sake alone, but your sake, my mother, the stranger I spare, but you've bartered the life of your son. For you have I broken my chieftain's command, my blood must atone for my guilt. So saying, the blade that he held in his hand, he plunged in his heart to the hilt. Farewell, noble soul, the brave Taitsu exclaimed. My brother, your mother is mine, in ages to come, you'll with honor be named, and adored in our family shrine. So very interesting, just little kind of glimpses as to what this kind of uh, world was like. And I find these very cool. I like, the, I like the way they flow. I'm not sure exactly who the author is, so I can't give them credit. But there's a lot of them here. And they start out with this one in this new Russian book. And this has Russian poetry with a lot of good information as well. I think I made a Tartarian Tales out of one of the chapters from this book. But here we go. Now for the pictures while you enjoy some of this poetry. This one is called St. Petersburg. See, from the Finland marshes there, tis grand St. Isaac's rears in air, column on column that shining dome, and just beyond its glorious swell, tis the slender spile of the citadel, where great Tsar Peter slumbers well, all by the Neva's flood in foam, that lifts its cross till the golden bars gleam and burn with the midnight stars. Very nice. Love it. St. Isaac's in the Crown Jewels. I of a god was this blazing stone, beyond the snows of the Himalaya. These dazzling stars might have lit the zone of the Queen of Jove or the Grace, Aglaia. And the rubies are such as the Burman king sends his elephants white to bring, with a troop of soldiers and high grandees greeting the finder on bended knees. Here's an emerald rare as the rose of pride, Cortez gave his Castilian bride, and lustrous green as the Indian gem Charlemagne wore in his diadem and pearls hard won by the Salonese from the silent depths of the tropic seas, while the conjurer muttered his spells ashore till the divers toils for the day wear o'er, and crystals amber and amethyst that only the oral caves could harden, bright as blossoms the sun has kissed in the fairy plots of a palace garden. 
very interesting. So this world was connected. This ancient past world was all connected. They were trading crystals. They were trading jewels. They were like using things with pride, like, oh, jewels from here. I'm going to give to my bride since I'm a prince. I can do anything I want. We give only the best. So they were traveling around. They were doing everything. So much was uh, adds to the vision of this time period. This one says, to Moscow. Across the steppe we journeyed, the brown fur-darkened plain that rolls to east and rolls to west, broad as the billowy main, when, lo, a sudden splendor came shimmering through the air, as if the clouds should melt and leave the heights of heaven bare, a maze of rainbow domes and spires, full glorious on the sky, with wafted chimes from many a tower as the south wind went by, and a thousand crosses lightly hung that shone like morning stars, Twas the Kremlin Wall, twas Moscow, the jewel of the Tsars. So wow, what was this place like in its prime? In these rainbow domes and spires, thousands of crosses on the top. Very interesting. And, and I find it really funny too, and I, when I drive by churches now that support Ukraine and hate Russia. And it's a, an immediate sign that they don't know what is going on or have a clue. Because Russia always seems very Christian dominated. And these churches that are now run by the other Lord are um, just clearly not. And they make it very obvious. And it's, it's really sad. But this whole ancient Moscow just sounds like a blessed place. All kinds of different things. Them caring about these sacred shrines so much. Religion everywhere. The chimes going through the city. Making everybody on the same plane harmoniously. Encouraging goodwill and awesomeness. I can't even imagine. Imagine what everything looked like and felt like and how nice the people probably were back in the time before anyone knows the lost time so this one says the shrines of Moscow above each gate a blessed saint as favor of the skies and the hosts of the foe do fail and faint at the gleam of their watchful eyes in pole and tartar and haughty gal flee dismayed from the Kremlin wall here lie our ancient Tsars asleep Ivan and Fyodor, while loving angels round them keep, sweet peace forevermore. Only when Easter bells ring loud, they sign the cross beneath the shroud. O Troitz's altar is divine, Saint Sergius, hear our prayers. In Kiev, Olga's lofty shrine, the name of the holy bears. But Moscow blends all rays in one, they are the stars, and she the sun. Very interesting. I wonder if that is in hints at their ancient religion, Zoroastrian sun kind of worship and mixed with, like, all, if all these were connected, if maybe all these linked at one point and then something, powers that be, made them separate, made them separate entities worth fighting over. But at one point, maybe all these religions were harmonized and maybe they weren't religion, maybe it was fact at one point. And then it's just gotten so skewed, it's become all this other nonsense since. It's, now it's a disaster. All right, here we go. Moscow beyond the Kremlin. Oh, the splendor of the city. When the sun is in the west, I, buddy gold, ruddy gold on spire in Belfry, gold on Moskwa's placid breast, till the twilight soft and somber, falls on wall and street and square, in the domes and towers in shadow, stand like silent monks at prayer. Tis the hour for dream and legend. Meet me by the sacred gate. We will watch the crowd go by us. We will stories old relate. Till the bugle of the barracks calls the soldier to repose, and from off the step to northward, chill the wind of midnight blows. Love it. The sacred gate, all these things sacred, is holy, just heaven everywhere, reflecting heaven, all this stuff, just so much more magical than our social media driven filth of today. Moscow bells, I love the bells. That distant chime, as soft it swells, what memories o'er me steal I. Again I hear the Moscow bells across the moorland peal. The bells that rock the Kremlin tower, like a strong wind to and fro, silver sweet in its topmost bower, in the thunder's boom below. They say that oft at Easter dawn, when all the world is fair, God's angels out of heaven are drawn to list the music there. And while the roads clouds with the breeze, Drift onward like a dream, high in the ether's pearly seas, their radiant faces gleam. Oh, when some Merlin with his spells a new delight would bring, say, I will hear the Moscow bells across the moorland ring. The bells that rock the Kremlin tower like a strong wind to and fro, silver sweet in its topmost bower in the thunder's boom below. 
very cool and i love how they mention the ether in there what is that the wow high in ethers pearly seas their radiant faces gleam wow they knew about it they definitely always trap it in the arts in the in the po poetry the artwork the sculpture the structures it's there that's where the secrets are and that's what i am dedicated to finding and uh there's a lot of paths to find it, but I love looking at this one, the creativity, because they always let out good stuff. I let a ton of good stuff out in my art that people won't find for generations, but I hope they did too back in the day. Here we go. Troitsa Monastery. Oh, sacred Troitsa, when the skies of morn are blue, I lift my eyes to see again in azure air thy starry domes and turrets fair, and to hear from thy gray cathedral walls the chanted hymn as it swells and falls. Then with the pilgrim train I wait, and enter glad thy wide-flung gate, to drink of Saint Sergius's holy well that heals the griefs no soul may tell, or kneel with them at his wondrous shrine, his staff in his simple robe beside, and trace on my breast the mystic sign, and pray for the peace of the glorified. Then fade thy towers, the music dies, above me are my native skies, blue and clear in the August morn, over the pines and the rustling corn. With a song from brook and breeze and bird, sweet as the hymn in thy cloisters heard. And I know the fields are a shrine as fair, for the Lord of the saints is here as there. Very cool. They love their saints in there. And I, who knows what information has been lost about them as well. How, how, what they were. Maybe they were gods. Maybe they were more than mortal men. Who knows? The fair of Nijni. Now, by the Tower of Babel, was ever such a crowd. Here Turks and Jews and Gypsies, there Persians, howdy bowed. With silken-robed Celestials, and Frenchmen from the Seine, and Kievans in Bokariotes, here's heirs of the Oxus Plain. Here stalk Siberian hunters, their tents a Gergis clan, by mournful-eyed Armenians from wave-girt Astrakhan. In Rus and Pole and Tartar, in mounted Cossack proud, now, by the Tower of Babel, was ever such a crowd. Jeez. The Tower of Babel, that's a whole nother mystery. I have an old video on that. You can check it out, but there's a lot of mystery surrounding that. Who knows where it was, when it was. Ziggurat of Ur in Iraq, maybe, but possibly so much more. This whole place could be the Tower of Babel. We are just building on it, and it just construction got stopped when we all got fed the wrong information. Who knows? Okay, uh, that, that one... I'm going to skip that one. Let's see. I'll go to Kazan because I love that place. Kazan looks down from the Volga wall, bright in the darkest weather. In the Christian chime, in the Muslim call, sound from her towers together. Shrine of the Golden Horde was she, boast of the proud Bokhara. And her fame was wafted over the sea and sung in the far Sahara. Hmm. Woe to her faith in her turbaned lord. The cross and the Rus were stronger. Her splendors now are the Tsar's reward, and her cons are kings no longer. Yet still she looks from the Volga wall, bright in the darkest weather, in the Christian chime, in the Muslim call, sound from her towers together. Very interesting. I love Kazan. I did another video on that. Take a look at that. This one says the Volga to Samara. Did you say surf, sir, surf? There's not one living today in the light of our sun. Russians, free Russians, we all of us are, from Osip and Michael, my boys to the Tsar. This cabin is old, but the garden is mine, and mine are these fields in that forest of pine. When I will, I can build me a house, strong and good, with logs of my own I shall hew in the wood. Oh, could my poor father but dwell by my side, he toiled all his days for a master and died. So worn and so hopeless, he told me that morn, he wished I and Esper had never been born. One year, and God gave us our glorious Tsar. How strange seems that servitude now, and how far. On my wall hangs his picture, full facing the sun, with the cross on his breast, in the Caucasus one. From Moscow it came, with its wide golden rim, gilded rim. Wilt enter and see it, sir, daylight grows dim. Here under the fir trees, and yonder I see, Osip and Michael stand waiting for me. I like how they uh, really like Michael, and I'm assuming they're talking about the one who destroyed Satan, and I wonder when that happened, and what really happened during that moment in time that they've erased. Here we go, a gypsy encampment. 
Nay, tell us not of curtained walls. To us they were a prison, better than all of your stady halls, in the heath where the blessed sunlight falls. In the free wind blows, in the plover calls, when the mellow moon has risen. And the sod for us is a nobler bed than the couch with richest damask spread. For ours are the stars in the mystic ties that link the earth to the rolling skies. Do you see that girl with the glance of fire? Woe to the man that dears her ire. She, know, she knows what planet has power to harm, what beam of the moon will fall as balm. In the hour when the stormy pleiades rise, and the star of love gives bliss for sighs, and over your palm with secret lore, she'll read what the dark years have in store. Keep your wealth in your gilded bowers, the glory of field and sky is ours, and all the spirits of earth and air follow our bidding, foul or fair. I love that, because I, I have a little bit of a gypsy in me, I feel, because I used to couch surf all the time. I was so happy living in that situation and going wherever and having every day be different and new, never knowing what was going to happen or where you're going to sleep. It's kind of fun, and it's interesting how they connect that with people really connected to the stars and the heavens and things like that. I wonder what they, if they were displaced people that were once from somewhere else that knew a lot about that stuff and kept it going through their gypsy style or maybe that's tartar ways who knows here we go the empire of the east hail to the glorious morning when the cross again shall shine on the summit of saint sophia o city of constantine in that day of sack and slaughter when the wild despairing cries of kyrie liaison fainter when wailing up to the skies shall be lost in the splendid triumph as the church reclaims her own and the patriarch welcomes our lord the czar to the caesar's ancient throne in the sky of the south at midnight we have seen god's flaming sign and we know he will drive the muslim horde as chaff from his sacred shrine silent will be on the muezia muezzin as the sun on asia sets folded the crescent banner crumbled the minarets then in the grand cathedral, victorious chants we'll raise, while the saints look down with loving eyes and the gems of the altar blaze. Hail to the day when the eagles and the cross shall gain their own, as the patriarch welcomes our lord the czar to the Caesar's ancient throne. Ha! Huh. And that goes with the whole Roman thought that this is all a continuation of Roman nonsense and insanity. Here we go. The Volga to Kamshin. And still we kept the Volga's tide, the Volga rolling gray and wide, while the gulls of the Caspian over it flew, a flash of silver and jet in the sun, and chill through the blast from the oral blue, circled and hovered till day was done. Faint in the lulls of the wind from shore came the loving, lowing of herds that roved the plain, and the bells rang over the water's roar, calling the hamlet to holy fane. And slowly the fishers of Astrakhan stemmed the current with lady keel, while the, laden keel, while the barges in the, the Kama peasant's man and the barks of the Oka past them ran, heaped with iron and wheat and steel, and as far as the wind could wander free, on either side was the grassy sea. Interesting. Uh, let's see here. I'll probably skip that next one. The Cossack country. Let's try this. The Cossack, the Cossack, his steed is his throne. On the steppe in the desert his glory is known. For he sweeps like the wind from the camp to the fray, and woe to the foe in the flying that day. False pagan, he cries, are you slave, are you shah? Now die by this lance, or take oath to the Tsar. The Cossack, the Cossack, a flame of the south, is the glance of his eye, is the word of his mouth. For the steel that he rides, for the saint he implores, and fairer and dearer, the girl he adores. The maiden's fond, fond lover, the Tsar's faithful warder. Ho, drink to the Cossack from border to border. <laughs> Interesting. And this part, right below the, uh, I'm just noticing now, right below the Cossack country, it says, The old Tartar Khans and after them, Peter the Great, tried to construct a canal near Tsaritsim, uniting the Volga in the Don. Intervening granite ridges and the lawless population of the region caused them to abandon the work. Hmm, we'll have to check that out. Maybe there's some scraps left over. Uh, let's see. I'll probably skip that one. The A's up. These are all about the C's. You can check those out again. Yalta and the Crimean Tartars. Let's check a look at this one. And still the Tartar loves the shores. The Yuxin washes and deplores. The glory of his race gone by. And often when the east winds sigh. The winds that warm from Asia blow, he dreams tis the murmur of hosts that go. 
Forth with Genghis in Timor strong, in his dark eyes flash, and he hears the song. Of the victors sung where the tent lines glisten, while couched on carpets Bokhara wove. For the chiefs that over their pastures rove, the Khan and his jeweled ladies listen. But the wind goes by, and a roll of drums from the fort of the conquering Russian comes. And their ships sail over the Euxine's foam, and their bells ring clear from tower and dome. It was written in fate's decree, he cries, Allah requite us in paradise. Hmm. Very interesting. I love that stuff. This one, because of today, the, we read this one, the Crimean coast in Alupka. Cross but this rocky height and low, a valley rare as Rasalas, found in the Abyssinian Pass, with warmth and beauty all aglow, where for Tartar mosque and royal villa is many a shining porphyry pillar, with marbles, marbles for altar and floor and stair, veined with vermilion or amber fair, and fountains fed by the rills that fall, cool and clear from the mountain wall, where the olive and orange and nectarine ripen the seaside gardens in, and the winds are sweet as the breeze that sighs over the meadows of paradise. Yea, in the blessed there might crave, Alupka, pride of the cliff and wave. Very cool. I love all this stuff. Ah, oh, there's so many. I want to read them all. Let's see if we can. Bide our gate in valley. Oh, bide our gate, lone bide our gate. What glories by thy portals wait? Beyond the pines, wide bowed and old, cliffs such as climb and alpine hold. Above the blue Crimean sky, where in still noons the eagles fly, and poise as if twere bliss to be, be calmed upon that azure sea. Below the Euxine with its sails fanned by the cool Caucasian gales, and all between the glen, the glade, where Tartar girls their trusses braid, and slopes where silver steamlets run, and grapes hang purple in the sun. And when within the wood fires glow, fond friends tell tales of long ago, and each recalls some lovely scene by mountain pass or meadow green. If they shall turn and ask of me the rarest glimp glimpse of earth and sea, I'll say with memory's joy elate, tis bide our gate, tis bide our gate. I'll have to find that as well. And I couldn't wait. I had to immediately find out what bide our gate was. And this is what it, the oldest picture I've ever seen, it looks like, of what could be bide our gate at one point. But then these pictures show what it looks like now and since the resets. But look at that. That thing could go so deep and so ancient. But this is now, and this is just in the Crimea out of nowhere, but apparently this poem had a lot of importance to this area and so wow what was it like in its prime that is just what i constantly think during all of this and look at that what that looks really cool how low does it go what was on top what was it used for what is that electrical device antenna coming from it so many questions always now let's get back to some poems the last few poems here we go this one is called savastopol over the dead is a syrian sky and a light wind blows from the vale of baidar but what care they as they mutely lie, column and captain, steed and rider? Tulips and poppies can never bloom, dear to the slumber as English daisies, nor the nightingale's warble and bowery gloom alone atone for the skylark's rapturous mazes. Ghostly cities and nameless graves, this is the sum of the battle's story. In the wind of Baidar, the brown grass waves and sighs above them, alas for glory. So that battle, I'm willing to think, was a devastator because, wow, the place got pummeled, especially from that really ancient picture. And again, all the, there must have been such a high population at one point. We always forget that, how quickly a population can get to 7 billion in our lifetime. And how many times did that happen in the past? And again, what happened to create the uh, population decline at inevitably? <sighs> so many questions. Odessa, dreaming and looking seaward, no longer the warders wait. Guard of the crescent banner, gleaming on tower and gate, the banner unfurled by the prophet, the banner in league with fate. Nor boom the guns of the fortress when sunset airs blow free, while the warriors kneel as the echoes die over step and sea. Kneel and pray that Muslim, that the Muslim lord of the world may be. Gone are the Turk in the crescent in the fortress of Koja Bay. And lo, in their place, Odessa, in the Rus with a grander sway, the Rus and the Royal Eagle that makes of fate his prey. <laughs> and we've got about two or three left, so we'll see. Over the step of Kitchenoff. Hush, I heard you, that horseman, how madly he rides. God pity the woman his coming that bides. 
wild oaths wafted up on the wind as he passed in a shade or the moonlight that mountain moment was cast what stirs there no bugle the barracks have blown no drum beats to quarters yet watching alone while the howl of the dogs fills the midnight with fear some foe stealing by in the darkness i hear has the turk crossed the border the tartar come back with the vengeance of murder and fire in his track there's a foot by the window, a flame on the floor, and lo, twas the wind in the moonbeam, no more. Wow, it's kind of scary. These people are, the Tartars put some fear into people. Kitchen F to Belzy. Here the white cattle graze that feed the Austrian Kaiser's towns. Close watched by dogs, alert to leap, if but the herder frowns. And here the shepherd tends his flock while the long days go by. Now couched beside them in the plain, now on the corgans high. The plover calls across the steppe, the stork with snowy breast, flies northward to the kindly roof that holds her summer nest. But nothing stirs his drowsy blood unless a lamb should stray. Then woe to wolf or gypsy thief that lurks beside the way. <laughs> God, I love this old world. Two more. The frontier. Oh, the glorious purple line of the mountains lifted along the west. Bright in the sun, their summits shine. Dark in the shade, their valleys rest. Cossack and Tartar may hold the plains and the rivers that creep to a tideless sea. Mine be the heights where the eagle reigns and cataracts thunder and winds blow free. Not for the steppe with its desert sheen from Austria's border to China's wall would I give the upland pastures green, the beech trees shadow, the brooklets fall. Vanish, O weary mournful level. Welcome, O wind, my brow that fans. In the splendor of earth, again I revel, greeting the purple Carpathians. <sighs> again, I gotta take a look at this book. And the last one is the Tsar. We're gonna end with a bang here, although it's a short one. The Tsar. Now who is he with lofty Mayan that down the street doth ride, nor bugles note, nor banners sheen, to tell the power of or pride? His brow no kingly crown displays, his breast no jeweled star. Yet Rus and Tartar reverent gaze, the Tsar. God save the Tsar. So, wow. There we go. That is a collection of Russian poetry that sheds some interesting light onto it. Again, I'm not sure who the author is. That would definitely help. It seems otherworldly. Sometimes it seems Britain when they mention the British daisies, but other times it seems different than that because the person knows a lot. The author, the artist, the poet. They seem to uh, have a good amount of tales, and some may have been taken through time and been long and passed on as traditional with no name. They've just been passed on, and that's kind of what I like to assume, although I'm not totally positive. But either way, very interesting. I hope you all enjoyed that and these pictures as well. There's so much to think about, so much to see, so much to discover. And again, I have no idea what the truth is, but we're piecing it together. Let's keep it, let's keep it up. Add some in the comments below. Bless you all, and thank you again for another... Yeah.